Hi everyone, my name's Andy Kerr. I'm here from Bowers and Wilkins in one of the most iconic and special places known to music, the world famous Abbey Road Studios. And even more so, I'm in one of the most famous studios there is within that building, Studio Two, where so incredible performances were made, not least of which, of course, were the Beatles, Pink Floyd, and many others that you'll all know and love. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to spend some time with some incredible people, some of the crew that work here, some of the engineers, some of the people responsible for the creation of all that music. And we're going to talk about what makes music special to them. So we're going to go through their favourite tracks. We're going to pull together an outstanding playlist from those favourite tracks. But along the way, we're also looking to pick out some unbelievable stories and some anecdotes. And just so you know, guys, you can check out the playlist we've created today on our social media. We'll be putting up all the links for you shortly. So how'd you find it? Radio 6 or something? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's my, my cheat sheet a little bit. I know friends of mine managed the band. Uh, so, yeah, I don't Why know if we're allowed mean? that then, but... <laughs> Um, so I was just really lucky to be okay. yeah, introduced cool. to it, yeah. But that's a really good point, isn't it? How do you find music, find right? It. I mean, because I think that's one of the things that we're trying to get to here as well, right? If you, if you subscribe to a lot of the music streaming services, what they do after a period of time, depending on your habits, is they start identifying your characteristics and they start mm. throwing in tracks that they'll think you like. So how do you break that cycle? I mean, if you, if you want to break that cycle and find something new. I mean, I spend a lot of time talking to friends and that's how I do it, but what would you do? Well, I don't know. I had a lot of friends. When I lived in a house with like five other guys who were all kind of like really into music, um, we had like a pair of like Technic 1210s and some CDJs and like we just played music to each other all the time. And that's what our kind of like living room was built around was that kind of like DJing area instead of the sort of like television. So we just kind of like play video games and then someone would hop up and play some tunes and they just play what they were listening to at that point. And I had some like cool housemates really. Like one of them worked for Warp. Um, all of them were kind of like DJs, so yeah, we just sort of like spin tunes from that. So do you think that kind of, I don't know, at that point in time when you were listening, did that peg you into a certain style? Because I mean, people say DJ and it sort of presents perhaps a picture Well, of a but we style. didn't always just play sort of techno and house and stuff like that. It was kind of like more varied than that. I think we sort of prided ourselves on like, you know, opening the sort of diversity a bit more. And I can tell. I mean, you've got Sonic Youth on your playlist for a start. That's not Yeah. <laughs> That's something I only discovered recently, actually. I got youth, got into youth this year. They were always like simmering there in the background and I always like heard them come on, but I probably like delved deep this time. Um, but the track that's on there is more of a kind of like poppy one because they've yeah, got yeah. a bit more kind of like noise, crazy stuff in their back catalogue, which is really cool. But um, I don't know, that was a track that I think I'd listened to, I'd heard around a lot when I was at school and then I kind of like rediscovered it this year and I was like, oh, it reminds me of like, because that's another thing with music is like connecting to that nostalgia element as well. Yeah. When you hear something that you remember you heard years ago and you all of a sudden get taken back to like being 15 or whatever, yeah. but you can't quite put your finger on what it is that's taking you there. That's what that track does for me. Sorry, younger people. When we were young, <laughs> it was a lot harder to get... <laughs> it was a lot harder to get hold of the music that you wanted relatively accessibly, right? So you either listened to it on the radio when it came on the chart show or whatever it was, yeah. or, or you went out and you bought it, or you went out and had a browse, or you hung out in a record store for three hours while somebody yeah. played music incredibly loudly at you because that was how it used to be. Went and then a browse, um, and that was the thing. So if you bought a record, it was a commitment, and having bought the record, you then played that record, yeah, and you played it a lot, and you got to know it inside out and backwards. Yeah. Whereas you delete the file, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So is, is like streaming changing the way people consume music? It's a class discuss. Oh, I've, I've found that, that um, with streaming, going back to what we were saying uh, many minutes ago uh, about you know, doing, uh, suggesting, su 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 suggestions. So you, you select Hawkwind or whatever and it comes up with sele uh, 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 a selection of bands and some of them, you think, I've never heard of this band before. Mm. Then you kind of go in down the rabbit hole. So that's the inverse yeah. way, that's the positive exactly. way. Exactly, and that's, that, that's what it used to be like in a record shop. You'd be looking for the title yeah. one's really quite good. But which one, <laughs> the, the similar one or, or your Discover playlist? Uh, the, 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 the similar two. Yeah. Because that, that, that's when uh, um, you, you get this, I guess, tsunami of uh, artists that you think, I've never heard of this band before. How can I, how, how have I never heard of this before? They combine both um, human, like collaborative filtering and algorithmic processes to, 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 to give you those recommendations, you know. I'm listening to more, more, since I started streaming, I'm listening to more music than I have done uh, since there were, you know, record It makes everybody record fans, doesn't it? Because all of a yeah. sudden everybody's got a record collection that maybe can't afford it to, you know. Yeah, yeah. To, 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 to buy the physicals or whatever. You can browse whenever you, you like. Can, you, can, you can get it, so you get access to it. So I think it's brilliant for that. Mm. If, it, if it makes more 14-year-old kids 
in the record fans, yeah. then, then that's good for the music, because you know what? When they get a few bob, they might start buying music, who knows? Mm -hmm. And that, that perpetuates this. Mm. The best way, that's the positive way. Exactly, and that's, that, that's what it used to be like in a record shop. You'd be looking for Led Zeppelin, and there'd be something in L, L that you'd see, and you'd think, oh, that's interesting. But you had to gamble. You yeah. gambled because yeah. you bought it. Yeah. You with with, the, with the streaming, money, obviously, yeah. you, you, get, you don't have the gamble. But you didn't, you didn't like but what it. what you still have is the, is the rabbit hole yeah. that yeah. you can go down. Uh, uh, went to LA for, um, for work on that, and then they went to Amoeba Records. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. And they spent uh, a couple of hours in there at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. 10.30 at night, you go to Amoeba Records, and this is, the, the shop's about as big as this, was much bigger than this, in fact. Uh, and you've, you've got one room like this size with normal music, and then you've got another room, similar sort of size, which is just jazz. Is it the biggest record yeah. shop in the world or something, then? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. Right. Uh, you, 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 if, when you go in there, just don't take your credit card with you. No. Because you, you could literally... You won't, you, you won't you, carry him back on a plane. Yeah, had different experiences it's, to that, which, which is the Tower Records experience when you've been shopping at midnight after um, a night out in the town, do you know what I mean? And then like, you come back in the yeah. morning, you look at the records you bought and go, yeah. yeah. no. what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> <Been done. laughs> that thing of the thrill of discovery. So like you, mm. with your mates at home, trying out new cuts and learning new things and then discovering something which, did you respect the other stuff you mentioned, is a very yeah. different genre type this year. Yeah. So when I was very young, was that thrill of discovery of something finding something new that I'd never heard before? Mm. Yeah. Give me your most exciting first discovery. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you, he's he's unfortunate. You lot have got some time to think about it. Oh, good God! My that's that's hard discovery. off the top. But yeah, I'm giving. I'm buying your time, Andy. This is this is hard. This. Um. Mm. You don't have to be the most exciting one, but something that sticks with you, like the moment you first heard it, it was like, wow, that's oh, it's, it's so lame though, because it's like related to the building. I used to, like, when I was younger, like the way I kind of like first started discovering music was I'd listen to like the radio all the time yeah. and I'd have like a little cassette player by the radio and like press record. Then I'd record it and then afterwards I'd like write down the lyrics and I'd be allowed on the internet for like 10 minutes a week because we had like dial up. So for that 10 minutes, I'd like go to the internet and type in these lyrics and find out the tunes. The one that just blew me sideways when I heard it was a day in the life. Oh yeah. And I was just like, that's nuts. I'd never heard anything like that. Um, so I like, frantically wrote down those lyrics and like found it that way. Um, so then, uh, uh, that's fine. It's brilliant and it's somewhat ironic as well. So it's somewhat <laughs> ironic. But is it when I was at that age as well, and then iTunes started coming out, and I really wanted to get that tune, but they weren't on iTunes. Yeah. And then I was kind of like starved of like that thing for so long that kind of like made me want that song even more. So I like had to go and like get the like CD and everything and like okay. that sort of things. But um, all right. Do you, yeah. Let, do you want to, the rest of you guys want to have a think about it? Thank you. I can dive. I wish I could. If you can go. Yeah. 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 go. go. Right. So we just had a brand new uh, you know, voyage of discovery with like the internet, even though it was dial up and whatever and whatever. But I can give you like an old school thing where um, I walked into our, into our flat when I was a kid with um, in a vision, Stevie Wonder tucked under my arm. And my old man said to me, um, Jeff, what, why have you got um, another Stevie Wonder record? You've already got one. And that had probably been talking book that I walked in with, a, uh, whatever, back. And I put in a visions on my Ferguson mono record player, yeah. never mind your dial-up. And um, it was, and still is, one of the best records I've ever heard. That was definitely a voyage of discovery for me on a tin box yeah. of a record player. Yeah. So again, it was, back, it was back about the music. It was just like, this is just... I mean, I'm not, we're not going to overkill it, right? But yeah. the Beatles didn't become the Beatles because of hi-fi. Exactly. No. They, 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 it was out the songs. Quite the opposite. Yeah. It was the dance, you know, the dance set, I think. Yeah, aren't you glad? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll do my d discovery. Okay, go. Uh, uh, at school, uh, someone gave me a cassette. Uh, on one side was uh, um, Planet Gong, Live Floating Anarchy, which is the Here and Now band, and yeah. two members of Gong, and then the other one was the Here and Now bands, uh, Give and Take. And I, I listened to that. and uh, On a Philips first, cassette player or something? Yeah, yeah, the first second I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that, uh, that was at the age of 14, and I've been buying their music ever since, yeah. collecting uh, David Allen's music. He's sadly dead now, but I became obsessed, absolutely cool. obsessed. I could listen to Gong all day. All day. <clears throat> Never get tired of it. And now you've got streaming quality out of your, you know, exactly. whatever box that, that is really, really crystal clear. And you know, forget about your cassette player that used to chew the tapes up. And could you <laughs> could you get a whole album on one side of a C9? <laughs> no, that's, right. that's out the window. Um, I was studying singing, um, 
uh, I've always been uh, really a lover of the 90s because I grew up with it. Um, so my, my parents would just leave me at home uh, in front of the TV and I would watch all the MTV or other like um, music videos, channels, and we would record the feed. So I would just replay the music videos I like from Enya, the Scorpions, that kind of thing. Um, Alanis Morissette a lot of times, like every day, every day. And my, my teacher, uh, when I was uh, a bit older, um, she would uh, let me sing all these 90s tunes that I loved. And at some point she was like, we're going to do something a bit different. It's like, okay, let, let's do it. Uh, do you know Bjork? I was like, no, just go home and listen to Bjork's stuff. So I went home, first video, Hyperballad. I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is this? And I've been a, a huge fan ever since. Like, it's, it's just amazing what she she's does, what she, she's been doing for decades. And that was my moment that, that all right, all right, that's, that's a lot that I need to discover. And definitely this is one of the top discoveries that I'm, I'm going to ever do. Like, it's going to be in my life forever. So I'm going to share my built moment with me because obviously I'm, again, older than you guys. But I remember uh, seeing her, I think it was on the MTV Awards, and she was with PJ Harvey. And they performed Satisfaction live as yeah. a pair. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Um, literally, it's just like just the best first cover version of a Rolling Stones song A I think I've ever heard. But it's just an unbelievable performance. And it's this tiny person. Yeah. She's, she's tiny. Mm. This, where, how does that much sound? Well, PJ Harvey's not exactly big either. But how, how does that much sound fit into them? It's just unbelievable where it comes from. So, yeah. I I totally know, that, that. That's something that comes from within with, with her. You cannot really understand what, what that is. It's just kind of a magic thing. It's so, so powerful yeah. as well, uh, soulful. It's, it's just fascinating in, in an incredible way. Um, so we say go down the rabbit hole. I don't know if that, that, there was a rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah, and discovering all the different um, albums of her. Um, I mean, Homogenic is just a masterpiece, yeah. and and so so aggressive sounds and 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 so powerful. Again, it's just unbelievable. Okay, cool. Right, you're on. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that. That was pretty strong. <laughs> <laughs> sure, um, cool. Yeah, I mean, it may, okay. So I've got two, maybe two honourable mentions and one proper exciting moment, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 I suppose the one I have to pick. I was, I was an ACDC fan it, it, when I just discovered them, and I was really kind of enjoying the the sound of the electric kind of sound of that that rock music, which was also very foreign to me. So it's like this weird journey of discovery. But what really kicked it was kind of travelling through the US with, on a holiday with family, my family, and I had a Walkman. And I just remember like every time we got into a different place, we'd find a music store. I'd be like, can we go to a music store, please? And I'd walk in and go, have you got an ACDC album? And it's because they have such a big back catalogue as well. Yeah. That's just a really exciting first journey of discovery. And it, it is responsible for everything that came after that, like my kind of obsession with, with exploring and, and, and finding music and, and buying it and stuff. So yeah, that's the first one. And they're all dependent on medium. The two quick honorable mentions would be um, uh, Eric Clapton's uh, Unplugged CD, which my dad had. But what it did for me was kick off a, a journey into Robert Johnson and the blues, which okay. a lot of people have taken, but it was just a beautiful exploration of the complete recordings of Robert Johnson after that. And that kind of brought me into the blues culture and, and I learned so much from it. And, and yeah, that, that was incredible. And then the, the last one is more quirky. It was, uh, so that one was CD. The first one was cassette tape. Third one is um, tape in a tape deck at home band called Corduroy, who I've always yeah. loved. Um, someone just sent me, gave me a tape and it was just like, oh wow, this is acid jazz. Like, I, you know, I hadn't heard it and it was another amazing journey of discovery and they're so quirky. The best way is to describe them is with the word Corduroy, you know, yeah. it's like, but really brilliant music as well. So yeah. The, the, Are you wearing Corduroys? And I'm wearing Corduroys, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Karma, yeah. that's what that is. Karma, not drama. <laughs> so have you seen ACDC live? I have, yes. When I was younger, we, yeah, a few of us got tickets to ACDC at Wembley Arena oh, yeah. and it was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it was. I remember, I remember going there once with my friend Nick and we came back afterwards and we were watching the telly in his flat and all I could hear for two hours was, <laughs> 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 yeah. 
You're lucky it went away. Absolutely. I know. It's one of those experiences. It doesn't, it doesn't, you, but it's still, at that time, it was what you did, right? It was incredible. Yeah. It's a great gig as well. If I talk to people that aren't in-depth music fans and we want to chat about music, mm -hmm. you talk about Prince and Stevie Wonder, everyone's, everyone's got one. Yeah, it's a common playing field, it's right? A common, yeah, it's a common denominator. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, if you pulled out the Sonny Landreth, something like that. People, yeah, well, that, that's a bit off the wall. Exactly. Because I also put that in because I know Sean likes Sonny Landreth. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. So the slide man from Louisiana, right? Yeah. Didn't he's, As we mentioned with Bob Dylan earlier on, Sonny Landreth isn't a great singer, but he's a fantastic slide guitar player. Clapton rates him and so on, and, and, and I, I rate him, so does Sean. And uh, when you were talking about experiences earlier on, about, you know, can you think of an experience with music? Well, I went to the Jazz and Heritage Festival in New Orleans in the early 90s, and we, sh there, there was a, we stayed in this big plantation house with, with some Americans, mm -hmm. like a house share, and one of them had a cassette with a Sonny Landreth album in his car, and he gave us a lift somewhere wow. to go and get something, I don't know, something to eat or whatever. And I said, who's this guitar player? And he said, it's Sonny Landreth. And he was, this guy was from Louisiana. He'd driven up. So I wouldn't have got into this guy, Sonny Landreth, without that chance meeting. Yeah. And I really, really like him. Isn't that great? Isn't experience? That's, that's what that's it's about. music fans. Yeah. You know. Sharing stuff. Yeah. All right, okay. We're going to spend some time now looking at the playlist stuff. Um, we're going to talk about how some of the tracks sound. I don't think you need to go through every single song because, for one thing, there's a lot of great stuff here. So if we can find out more about the playlists by, you know, obviously accessing them later on, which is what we'll do, we'll put them all up on, online for people to share and, and to view, and that's great. But I think it's really important we actually just, you know, spend a bit of time actually looking at some of these pieces of music. And what we also want to do, obviously, ideally, is find out how the experience that you've had of listening to them at home on, you know, on our speakers has been, what that's been like for you. So I'm going to begin with you, Andy, because you've got, I'm going to say probably one of the most diverse mixes here, oh, in, yes, no. which is, well, yeah, that's, that is meant as a compliment, right? Okay. So, hopefully <laughs> so look, okay, um, I'm a big fan, so I'm going to start you off with John Hopkins. Can you yeah. talk us a bit about that one? Um, I'd say I got into that, the whole album's insane, that one. It's hard to pick out one particular track from it because the whole thing sort of flows. It's like an experience from like start to finish. And um, it's just one of those records that has like an incredible depth to it, I think. And it really like suits listening to on speakers because you can kind of like, actually it's one of those ones you can lose yourself in headphones in as well, but you get the proper depth and like feel in on the speakers on that one. Um, and it's just got so many nice little sounds. And that record starts with like quite an aggressive sounding track and slowly slips into the chiller end of things. And that's on the chiller end of things on that one. Anybody else heard that one and liked it? Which one was this, sorry? The John Hopkins, Sun Harmonica one? Yeah, it was like uh, Electronica. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, but with Electronica for me, uh, it, it, it sits it sits a, 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 like a dynamic that is like flat. Does it, it, it's, it's not, it doesn't have the, the, the depth of stuff that I like to listen to, but it's kind of something you could you could hear it in a nightclub late on and think, yeah, this is this is because it was really cool. Yeah, you know? the depth to me comes in the sort of choice of textures and sounds rather yeah. than the kind of like you break it down. loudness of it. Yeah. Um, if you had to pick, here's a challenging one. Yeah. If you had to pick one out of the ones that I chose, out of all of them. Can you One. run them off really quickly? <laughs> okay, so we got, uh, okay, John Hopkins. Uh, if I just said the artist, will that help you? So John Hopkins, Sonic Youth, Foles, Sophie, Goat, Aphex Twin, LCD Sound System, Mac Miller, Neutral Milk Hotel, Tom Waits. Tom Waits. I, I kind of knew you were going to say that, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I kind of knew you were going to say just that. It's like organic and the most human and... Um... I don't know, that one, that was one of those songs that threw me into like a totally different world of listening to music. He kind of like, because just watching his interviews and the way that he talks about things, he listened to such a wide, diverse range of stuff. He threw me down like the avant-garde hole and things like that. And I don't think I'd listen to music in the same way today if it weren't for him. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Let's go something completely commercial. Let's go Lady Gaga. All right. Yeah. Um, I think art pop is one of the best pop electronic albums that I've ever heard. And I found quite um, uh, interesting that at the time when it came out, it didn't have that much succe success as the previous Lady Gaga albums. Yeah. Because when I, when I listened to it the first time, I was like, this is mind blowing. The, the electronic production of it on it is, is just so precise. And the sounds with those like, huge, um, uh, square waves that are like blowing you away 
is 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 just so powerful and and I I didn't really understand why people were not liking it. Maybe they were expecting something different from her. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I have the 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 I, I bought the vinyl, I have the CD. Um, I, I've listened to it in every possible form, and I thought that that song in particular it has. Uh, um, it's just super catchy, super pop. It's, it's the good mix between pop and um, an electronic production that is not exactly pop, mm -hmm. but it works very well with pop. It's like a super pop yeah. uh, in, in, in a sense. And it's so polished and it sounds so good. And it's one of those that probably is, a lot of people would be like, yeah, but you know, it's Lady Gaga. It's like, yeah. I'm like, Listen to that. Books and, because... books and covers. She's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> books and covers. Don't, like, just it's Lady Gaga, it might not be. I saw a thing that she was she was playing with uh, uh, Elton John, is the, their pianos facing each other. Yeah. yeah. It's just pianos yeah. and those two. That. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, the film, yeah, the film with Bradley Cooper. Yeah. You're thinking like, I mean, oh, yeah. uh, Lady Gaga, are you yeah, sure? Talented. Where's that and then, and then she starts yeah. to, talented. and then she opens her mouth and sings. Yeah. Right, it's your turn. Why am I in no way surprised what? That, your, that your playlist is a surgical scalpel of precision uh, based on just three different performers or uh, performances? Mm. Let's talk about them. Uh, obviously, we have to begin as the sole and only classical entrant okay. in this entire playlist. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the Rachmaninoff. It's the Rachmaninoff version of uh, the Liturgy of St. John de Christostom. It's Russian. And uh, it was recorded in um, King's, King's College. Uh, Cambridge with their, their choir and it's just one of the most amazing I experiences you could have. It's like being there. You go into a cathedral, it's all made of stone, there's a chill in the air. When you listen to this you can feel that. You can smell the cathedral, you can smell the incense. But the, the uh, King's, uh, the, the actual uh, uh, cathedral itself, the sound is uh, astounding. I, I had to say, I was talking to him about it when I first saw him this morning. It, it just was one of the most eye-opening experiences for me. The whole thing's 74 minutes long. The, <laughs> actually, that's, the only one, that's just the first track. But I was listening to it on yeah. a pair of headphones, and it literally it starts back and past your right ear. Mm. I mean, on a pair of headphones. So I mean, it's an unbelievable listening experience. Can, All right. Can I ask a question about that track? Sorry, uh, Andy, to, to Sean. Like, uh, that listening experience this morning really got me going as well. But, but is, is it recorded to tape and does it break up ever so slightly at the end? I have no when you idea. hear the harmonies, there's a bit of a stutter. And I just wondered. I mean, I think that's interesting. I don't no think idea. that's a bad thing. No but idea. How old is wondered. it? Um, good question. I don't know. It's, probably it's, it's, it's within. It's within mm, no, I don't think it is. Um, it, was, uh, it was done, I think it was remastered here by Andy. Because the only reason I was I listened to the Rachmaninoff one is because Andy Andy Walter had done the uh, um, Tchaikovsky mm -hmm. thing of the same thing, which is a, a completely different piece altogether. He was like, listen to this, and then I was trawling, trawling through the catalogue, working out what CDs I was going to have this month, mm -hmm. and I saw that uh, as you know the Rachmaninoff, and thought, mm, I wonder what that's like. And I, I can know exactly why. I seriously know exactly why you've chosen the last one, uh, and I'm going to speak speak particularly if I'm busy, which. Uh, Bootsy Collins, come on, seriously. <laughs> Bootsy, yeah, he's brilliant. And that album particularly, that was the first Bootsy album I ever bought. Um, I don't know why, I suppose I just thought I'd just try this out. So I, mean, I got quite into funk and that, but I put the Bootsy Collins on and it was like, what? <laughs> Unbelievable, that first track when it kicks in, off the hook. Yeah. It is apt, because it, it, it just is. is off the hook. It's tight. The bass line is just amazing. And then it, 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 there's a little interlude after it, which I've not included on there, and then it kicks into the other one, um, for featuring Roddy, Rodney O. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the funk oh, ain't broke yet. Funk ain't broke. No, yeah. don't try to fix it. <laughs> ah. So look, what we were thinking about doing initially um, is, is trying to get some kind of honed, crystalline, perfected kind of playlist based on, I don't know, 20 of these. I just don't think it's actually really possible because there's such a great... There's such a great diversity of stuff here. So I'm going to change it up and do a slightly different thing to it. If you had to kind of, I mean, we're all in this together, so to speak. But if you had friends who weren't, let's say they, they didn't like music or they hadn't been convinced about sound or they didn't know anything about speakers and you wanted to just introduce them to what it's all about, pick a couple of tracks, what would you play? I'd play my Aphex one. Yeah? Yeah. Bootsy Collins, put a smile on his face. Put a smile on his face. John Mayer. 
This is this is how records are made. Okay. You have to give me more than that. That's a statement. Well, from this you. is Come this on. is how records are made. This is how records are made with with a band. I said earlier on organically, where they're all in the room and they put the rhythm tracks down first, and then last they do the vocal, and you can just hear the placement is right for a. Um, but this is this is a voice. This is a blue-eyed soul voice that's just that that has that has emotion, and you can just if you turn this up, you you feel like uh, you're 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 at the gig, and you you, you just you, you, it's got. It's got soul. Again, it's got a fusion. Mm -hmm. It's got it's got a fusion of stuff that I don't normally like in my clinical world of jazz funk. Mm -hmm. But it it's just you know I'd say to you just come on listen to this and tell me you don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Through right. these speakers. So can t John Mayer, Bootsy. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, Bootsy. There's a, there's one I didn't put on there, but. Oh, what well, denied now? You see her out now. <laughs> the name, I can't quite get it. Uh, Barrington, Barrington Whitfield and the Savages, yeah, I think it is. Oh. All right, okay. Br brutal, brutal. But on this, but on, on this that, we're going Bootsy. Uh, yeah, Bootsy. The Apex Twin. Yeah. The Apex Twin. Yeah. Okay. Just for the, like, the sort of speaker sense and sort of like depth and all that kind of stuff. It's just so much emotion in that track as well. The choice of sounds is spot on. Like you were mm. saying about the Nine Inch Nails one, about something coming in here, coming yeah. in there. Yeah. I think speakers are good for that kind of Anyone stuff. Anyone can get away with doing a DJ night playing sandpaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to listen to Bjork at least once in your life. Okay. It's easy. So the, the, the amount of uh, power she puts in, the emo it's emotion without restraint Okay. when she sings, I think. Yeah, she is. There's no restraint there. Whatsoever. There's some violence in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there's a video it. I remember of Bjork, um, early on Bjork. She's on the back of a lorry, I think the track's violently happy. Yeah. And she's going through New York on the back of this lorry. Mm. I don't know if it's New York or whatever. And it's a real crackers video, right? It's mad. Mm. But that video sticks in my mind. And I'm not a Bjork fan. Mm. Violently happy on the back of a lorry. Yeah, I remember it well. Mm. All right, I'm, we're working our way around. You've had the most time to think about it. I actually think I can kind of guess what you're going to go for, and it might not be the Taylor Swift. But Radiohead. I, I, mean, I do love that Taylor Swift uh, track. There's a really nice sound, sound bed to it, but yeah, just right there. Radiohead. You're probably, yeah, that's what I was yeah, about. <laughs> everything in its right place, just because of the sound of those synths at the beginning and how it's it all timeless. builds. Yeah. yeah. Think how old that record is. It's timeless. Yeah, yeah. Different. I think it's, it's done here, wasn't it? In your room. Mm. Room five. 2000. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Not with me. Oh, yeah. Chris Blair, rest in peace. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the master cut special. version, the master cut version then, everything in its right place. We've got Bjork yoga, we've got, um, which, which boots are you going to go with? I'm busy off the hook. Off the hook. All right then. Okay, fine. And then Aphex Twin, Alberto Balsam. Alberto Balsam. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and of course we can't forget you, John Mayer. Waiting you won't for the... forget me, I'm unforgettable. <laughs> John Mayer, waiting for the world to change. Well, I am, I'm still waiting. <laughs> 